Hey, uh, this is Yash Yadavalli. Uh, welcome to week 4 of um, Intro to GIS. Uh, this week we'll be talking about map projections, uh, coordinate systems, and then we'll uh, look at different GIS data sources and vector data formats, and then raster data formats. Uh, so, uh, before we talk about map projections, let's talk about uh, the basic latitude and longitude. I hope you know what this is. Um, longitude is essentially meridians. Um, you know, when you look at the earth, uh, the, the spheroid, you know, like the earth, um, you know, the, all, the, all the vertical lines are called meridians. These are non-parallel lines because of the shape of the earth. And then there is latitudes, uh, which is essentially parallels. Um, you know, the the prime meridian is the zero degree longitude and uh, zero degree latitude is called equator so based on these two lines uh, everybody else on earth is given a latitude and a longitude every place on earth so if you are talking about pittsburgh essentially it is uh, 40 degrees uh, you know it's written something like this uh, the latitude is 40 degrees 26 minutes to seconds and uh, the longitude is uh, minus 80 degrees uh, 0 minutes 58 seconds so uh, if you want to convert this into a decimal degree units from a degrees minutes and seconds unit uh, this is the calculation 1 degree is 60 minutes 1 minute is 60 seconds so essentially it becomes 40 degrees 434 degrees um, uh, translated to distance, lat long coordinates are used to actually translate to distance uh, based on Earth's uh, circumference. Uh, through the poles is uh, 24,859 miles, 0.82 miles. So, for latitude, it's essentially uh, 1 degree 69 miles, uh, one, 1 minute is 1.15 miles, and 1 second is 101 feet. So, that's how it's calculated. And the length of equator is 24,901 miles, um, 55, you know, 0.55 miles. So let's talk about map projections. So uh, what are map projections? Uh, within ArcGIS, every data set we use uh, has a coordinate system in which it was created in. So to integrate. Um, so this coordinate system which is used to integrate it with other data layers uh, within a common framework such as a map so this uh, coordinate system is pretty critical uh, which uh, because it enables to uh, sort of like overlay all these layers on top of each other so that you perform advanced analysis and operations so So map projection, why is it important? Because um, measurements are used to make important decisions and to measure some anything, it needs to have a common reference. And uh, since uh, you know GIS is all about comparing shapes and areas and distances and di or directions of a map features, it is quite important. Um, it is uh, also we need to have all the features and image themes lined up or overlaid on top of each other perfectly so that we can perform such measurements and uh, analysis so it is quite critical so if you are talking about uh, if you are talking about distances from LA to New York um, if you use a particular type of projection the distance becomes uh, which is the Mercator projection the, the distance is 31 24 67 miles versus if you use Al Albert's equal area projection uh, the distance be between uh, the two coast to coast becomes 2400 miles so th it is a significant difference so you need to understand which projection to use for what um, for what purpose so uh, if you are a, a air force operator you, you you need to understand this because uh, what you <laughs> this could mess up a whole lot of things uh, so you need to understand map projection and we'll see what that is 
so actual distance is close to 24051 miles so of course uh, albert's equal area is much more accurate and we'll see why that is so who uh, projection is not really impo that important for business applications because uh, we are not really measuring stuff except to identify patterns uh, so to speak uh, we are mostly you know in this class we are mostly concerned with relative location or you know if uh, versus uh, other features uh, we are not really worried about measuring stuff uh, measuring is more for engineering um, uh, military um, purposes uh, maybe uh, infrastructure related maybe airline related um, uh, purposes but not critical for business applications also on large scale maps like street maps uh, distor distortion uh, large scale maps is essentially large detail which means uh, very little area um, so the distortion is fairly insignificant uh, so you can almost ignore this projection uh, uh, information but it's important to understand this because uh, eventually we do want to line up all our features so let's talk about coordinate systems so a coordinate system um, as we already know that it enables data sets uh, with to sort of like use uh, common locations for integration and uh, a coordinate system is a reference system used to represent the locations of geographic features imagery and observations such as gps locations with a within a common geographic network uh, or a framework so how do we define this it is usually defined by three uh, things one is measurement which is either geographic or uh, planimetric uh, geographic uh, which uses spherical coordinates uh, measured from Earth's center always or planimetric which is the Earth's coordinates are projected onto a two-dimensional planar surface and then all the locations are calculated based on that two-dimensional surface so that's why we have two different types of coordinate systems one is a uh, geographic or global and second one is projected so we'll see what those are and then of course it is also defined by unit of measurement typically feet or meters if it is a a uh, planimetric or a projected coordinate system or decimal degrees uh, for latitude and longitudes so the definition of map projection which is the third type um, uh, is also uh, critical in deciding uh, uh, or defining coordinate system so let's let's look at these two major types of coordinate system which is a geographic coordinate system um, which essentially uses a three-dimensional sur spherical surface to define locations on earth so a, G a geographic coordinate system also known as gcs um, sometimes um, uh, is an uh, is incorrectly called as datum but don't worry about that it's not it's only a part of the uh, GCS um, a GCS includes an angular unit of measurements a prime meridian and a datum based on a spheroid again um, a point is referenced by its longitude and latitude values uh, when you are using a geographic coordinate system and it is uh, la the longitude and latitude are angles measured from at center to a point on its surface um, usually measured in degrees um, as you can see here Pittsburgh is calculated as 40 degrees uh, um, to 80 degrees uh, from the Earth's center uh, 40 degrees latitude um, to 80 degrees longitude again so uh, that's a G so GCS is usually used for like small scale um, uh, maps you know if you're talking about entire United States a continent or something like that you use um, GCS uh, so it, if you actually project um, G using GCS if you you know it's not like you cannot use GCS for even large-scale maps it's just gonna look a little distorted at times um, 
and then what is a projected coordinate system it is uh, usually again uh, like we like the planimetric uh, it is defined on a flat two dimensional surface unlike geographic coordinate system which is uh, a projected coordinate system uh, based on this, the the you know the shape of the earth uh, and the angles are calculated from the centroid so um, in a projected coordinate system uh, it has constant lens so the lens won't change angles won't change areas across two dimensions won't change because it is based off a, a two dimensional surface um, so always a projected coordinate system is always based on a geographic coordinate system that is based on sphere or spheroid um, in projected coordinate systems, uh, some locations are based uh, defined by x and y coordinates on a grid. Um, each position has two values uh, that ref uh, refer it to the central location, and the two values are called x coordinate and y coordinate. Um, x and y's, you know, like we usually do. So rectangular coordinate system, uh, just like uh, the projected coordinate systems, uses uh, a flat sheet or a 2D map for locating an intersection. Uh, so again, it uses Cartesian coordinates, X and Ys, and essentially it is used in uh, state plane and UTM, Universal Transverse Mercator coordinate systems. <coughs> So state plane is very critical for us because this is what is used in local government and uh, you know at, at a large scale uh, pertaining to local governments and regional maps. So we, ne we need to understand this a little more uh, better than rest of the coordinate systems anyways. So uh, essentially uh, established by US Coast and Geodetic Survey in 1930s. Uh, so uh, it has all positive coordinates as you can see and again uh, it is uh, uh, it constant it constantly refers to NAD uh, also called as the North American datum and most recently this datum North American datum gets uh, um, you know sort of like modified once in a while so in 1983 it's uh, so the recent coordinate systems are called NAD 1983 so you can find these coordinate systems I'm going to show you where those are in the walkthrough uh, under the NAD 1983 folder so uh, moving on uh, uh, state plane zones uh, essentially which means a state plane coordinate system um, is, a, is actually defined by zone there are 125 zones um, for which a coordinate a state plane coordinate system has been defined um, uh, which means that essentially each state has one or more so uh, it definitely uh, you know uh, even if it is a bi-state region uh, you'll have like uh, in Missouri let's say St. Louis uh, St. Louis would have Missouri uh, east um, and then Illinois West uh, coordinate systems but it won't have sort of like a combined uh, coordinate system for these two by state area so you can use either one of those the error would be pretty minimum uh, so each has its own projection uh, Lambert conformal projection for uh, zones with east to west extent like or which are horizontal like maybe Kentucky um, and then uh, transverse mercator for north south extent especially for us uh, you know missouri and illinois these states actually use the transfer uh, mercator projection so again um as, as you can see all these are individual zones you can see so california looks like one two three four five six seven one two three four five six uh, zones i can count and then these go, uh, zones keep getting revised and uh, so uh, uh, in this case, uh, Florida has uh, North, West, and Florida East uh, uh, zones. So, depending on where you are working, uh, where your project is located, you you want to find that state plane zone and actually refer to that. You know, use that projection for all your maps. Again, Pittsburgh um, uh, state plane, uh, Pittsburgh neighborhoods as uh, state plane coordinates. Again, one of the benefits of using state plane coordinate system is that um, it is mostly um, the map units are not in 
degrees uh, there in feet so that, that's an advantage and universal transfers marketer uh, is also uh, one of the more popular uh, projection syst- uh, coordinate systems that we will use um, you know um, it again it is also a rectangular coordinate system uh, used by military uh, it, it essentially covers the entire world and metric coordinates because you know um, uh, and then longitude uh, longitude zones are six degrees apart and latitudes are eight degrees high so that's how it's uh, used and there are other projections like mercator projection uh, again use uh, uses like a conformal projection and it is cylindrical um, Again, uh, this is uh, based on a 2D map, so the parallels and meridians are at right angles. Uh, linear scale is constant on all directions around any point. So that, that's pretty given because it's a 2D projection. Uh, so as you can see, it uh, the, if you use this, it's going to distort the size and shape of large objects, uh, especially if you can, uh, if you look at like, uh, Antarctica it's really not that big you know uh, so you have to use the right kind of projection if you want to show um, essentially to reduce this distortions um, <clears throat> uh, again this is a hammer uh, eight off um, projection it's an equal area projection which is uh, more representative of the sizes uh, as you can see the sizes of all the continents all the countries looks more more or less like what they should be so good for population density map for maybe worldwide whereas the other one we just uh, uh, is good for nautical purposes so uh, may, but it is difficult to see let's say like uh, North Pole and stuff so uh, but Robinson projection of 1961, uh, it, it is sort of like a pseudo cylindrical projection. It's neither, it, it's sort of like midway between equal area and conformal projections, which means it sort of reduces um, uh, the, it's a best of both worlds, so to speak, and we'll have a more realistic looking maps, avoiding all the extremes. Uh, so Albert's equal area is a conic projection which we use a lot uh, also um, because uh, the scale and shape are not preserved uh, distortion is minimal between uh, standard parallels um, and the ma you know if you use this it's pretty good for like entire US maps you know because the areas look more representative uh, of what the sizes of the states are and uh, it essentially you can you can relate to this map because nothing is uh, distorted but uh, usually the scale and the shape are not so well preserved as you can see as we talk about these projections each projection serves a particular purpose not everything it's not like um, one size fits all sort of a thing obviously it depends on the type of map you're trying to create the type of uh, um, information uh, the type of area you're working on whether it's you know small scale large scale that kind of stuff so it's up to you what you want to use um, and it also is defined by the project most of the times uh, geographic coordinate system I uh, again sort of like summary uh, is used by US Census as uh, as we already discussed and state plane is used by local governments and US military uh, projections are defined in our catalog or arc map um, and if you actually look for like shape file projection it is usually stored under star dot PRJ files so so first uh, first file uh, again there is a little trick um, on how to the, the easy easier ways to actually align all your features so to speak uh, the f- if you add a, a like a uh, feature layer that has already uh, has a defined projection if you add that first the map assumes that the rest of the layers will be in the same projection as the first 
um, feature class that that is added, whether it's a shape file or you know geodatabase file, anything. So uh, make sure the first file that you add to your map has a projection. That would be the key. So, anyways, let's talk about GIS data sources. So let's continue talking about GIS data sources. Uh, so we all know there is a lot of data out there. Uh, you don't really need to reinvent the wheel, so to speak. Um, so there are data sources uh, like ESRI, Census, and a lot of government organizations that you can just go to and download the data you need uh, because uh, of the Right to Public Information Act. Um, you can essentially download anything you want. Uh, so uh, these are some of the data sources that you can go to and download like street information, census, census data and so on and so forth and even like aerial photographs and land um, you know uh, land surveys and CAD drawings and um, th there's just like excellent sources for you to actually go and get free data without spending any money on this so uh, some of the websites uh, Penn State's um, PSDA is a great website. Uh, so for Missouri, there is something called MSDIS, um, which is like the Missouri Spatial Data and Information Service, which is a brilliant source of, uh, you know, it's a it's an excellent website if you want to uh, go to and download um, any information about Missouri. So the make make sure you use this i use this a lot uh, you know data you know you can go to census data and you can download either 2010 census or 2000 census um 2010 census you have all this different information and this is just really really useful and easy to use so and other data sources uh, one of the free data sources i would definitely recommend if you are looking for 2000 data although now it's uh, old, old news we have 2010 census right now but nevertheless uh, you can go to esri.com uh, or you can just look for esri tiger data just type in that you'll get to like uh, esri download 2000 tiger lines you know it'll get you to this website where you can select the state you want uh, let's say illinois and select the layer of data you want to download so you want to download sf1 files or um, pl94 files or whatever that is um, you can essentially download using this website quite easily this is very easy to use uh, it's apps uh, it's i think is extremely unfortunate that asri stopped doing this for 2010 census data uh, which would be uh, really useful but we do have an improved uh, census.gov uh, website where you can go to um, this very confusing website at times but you can go to geography go to tiger and uh, if you you know tiger products are essentially uh, topo a topologically integrated ge geographic encoding and referencing data which is uh, the <laughs> anyways we'll talk about this but uh, uh, you can t uh, now you you can download tiger data in in uh, as a shape file or a geo database so that they are you know they are making it really easy for you to download this stuff uh, you can download uh, with demographic data more because before you used to have to uh, match all the files individually to get this data but you can just like download all this stuff uh, quite easily so if you are looking for 2010 um, you can just click on 2010 demographic profile and then click on census tracks because that's what we are mostly looking for and then you can download it for the entire country um, or if you want to download it for census blog groups and stuff uh, you can essentially do it uh, if you're looking for the latest data uh, American Community Survey provides a lot more information than the basic um, uh, you know housing and population profiles um, so if you are looking for let's say uh, means of transportation which is the B8301 file uh, the field uh, or table you can go to the state you want to download and click go and it will download the 
you know download that in a geo database format which you can use quite easily so so there are different ways of doing this right now and the book is a little old school um meaning it is uh, written in 2008 i believe uh so so the 2010 data hasn't been released yet so it wasn't updated uh, but we will learn how to do deal with this new set of information so uh let's go back to our presentation um so we, we saw some of these uh, resources and you know as you can see there are like 30 million internet result internet search results or more if you have to download if you are looking for gis data download you know uh you can essentially google it you know the term google it uh, is you know what that means everybody knows what that means essentially just type in what you are looking for in um uh, the search bar and uh, it's right in front of you most of the time so uh, ma make sure you do that first and then uh, gis dip uh, if you are looking for like specific department websites if i am looking for like st louis city website i would just go to st louis city Uh, and see what's already available although all the city data is now uh, on a public website called um stl public data sets if you do that uh, public data sets city of st louis you can go here and essentially you know um just give so you can click on this public data sets uh, right here and you can download um yeah, click here to view available data sets you have parcels blocks strategic land use park and so on and so forth extremely useful information if you are working on city data you also have parcels land records tax records you can download i think this file these files are updated uh weekly if if not monthly probably um Uh, and then you can you can download like building permits and so on so there is a ton of information out there for you to just download and get to work so ma make sure you do this you know once we, you, you have to explore what's available maybe you can call the planning department to see what's going on so um this kind of stuff is extremely critical so um especially i w work with a lot of city data so i need that um, information by parcel so uh just uh, if you are looking for washington dc go to this website uh, just throw in a few examples so yes our website we already saw this uh, also you can buy information obviously uh, there are a lot of that there is a lot of that going around you can essentially buy data if you are looking for you know really advanced uh, uh, you know like if you are looking for a lot more data than what is freely available you can obviously buy that information so uh census bureau uh, a little background um in they started in late 1970s uh, building this uh, uh huge uh, map database you know map infrastructure and uh, and then you know census mapping uh, you know essentially they are two fold as to essentially they they said okay let we need to send out crew onto the field to collect information so how do we do that uh, we need um, to figure out who will survey what so what they decided was uh, they need to break down this massive country uh, into smaller groups so that each surveyor can can be assigned a district so that's how it all started so they thought okay a city block size or equivalent would be the right size for one person to survey so that's how we got to the the basic ge uh, geographic unit census block and 
um, essentially based on that the census block gets bigger and bigger as you move out of the cities because there are less people um, in the equivalent area uh, so if you go to census block for I don't know St. Charles or something like that it's, it'll be massive uh, so uh, and if you come to the city you'll have uh, teeny tiny uh, census uh, blocks because they uh, because of the densities essentially so um, map features which are generally smaller than that are the responsibility of the local government meaning anything less than a block what would that be it could be is uh, it could be probably parcels so that becomes the responsibility of the local government so and buildings of course and street curbs and parking lots and others so what so they um, back then there was no shape file so they called it tiger which is topologically integrated geographic encoding and referencing files which is quite easy to say or you can just say tiger files um, you know it's the census bureau's uh, you know, proprietary product for uh, digital mapping of us uh, and again this is free information available for entire us and its positions and whenever they do a bicentennial uh, census or whatever and they do provide that data that was collected like all the um, aggregated data by these individual geographies which you can download for free um, they do also they do survey of features like roads and street center lines and they do provide information on railroads rivers lakes and uh, statistical boundaries so uh, what is a statistical boundary um, uh, which is usually below a county level between uh, uh, 1000 and 8000 people so uh, more or less it's like <coughs> 1700 uh, 1700 units are 4000 people so for a census track um, the, it's usually about 1700 housing units or 4000 people usually they are uh, you know anything could have 1700 uh, census tracks but to in order to actually keep these uh, homogeneous uh, population characteristics they they say okay this area looks pretty similar so yeah, the, there's a lot of um, um, analysis that goes into what becomes a census track also um, usually it follows like main roads or it usually follows some kind of like a national boundary like a creek or a river or something like that so or a city boundary or a uh, county boundary administrative boundaries um, you know so, uh, it could so both visible and non-visible features um, so more than 60,000 census tracts are there in census 2000 and uh, I'm, I'm sure there are even more in 2010 because population grows which means we'll have a lot more census tracts because uh, you need to sort of like create these new census tracts to keep the tracts small enough to actually fit the 1700 housing units or 4000 people definition so uh, Pennsylvania census tracts we already worked this file a little bit so it has an FAPS or a track number and essentially FAPS is a combination of state uh, or county FAPS and the track number so and then you have all the information that you need uh, you might not actually get all this information if you just download the tiger file but if you download the tiger file with data you'll get this information and more um, so as you can see here um, again uh, one thing to notice is how small these census tracts are within the city areas or urban areas and how w spread out these are or how huge these are uh, within uh, the rural areas so uh, just a zoom in of the same information Allegheny County if you look at the same stuff no, oh I'm sorry this is the state this is uh, if you zoom in this is the the county itself and you can see that um, so you can see that um, uh, if you overlay the city boundaries on top of this I you know the census tracts are quite small within the main city which is the Pittsburgh right here and you know the census tracts become a lot bigger in the suburban cities 
So, uh, if you zoom into actually Pittsburgh city census tracts, what you are seeing below is actually census block groups. So, as you can see, the block groups are much smaller. And uh, so, what is a block group? Again, it's a subdivision of a census tract, 400 to 400 housing units uh, with a minimum of 250 and a maximum of 550 housing units. And it has to follow clearly visible features such as roads, rivers, and railroads. So, I I'm sorry, those were not census block groups. These are. Um, so, the, as you can see, there are like maybe uh, five times at least uh, the number of census tracts or four, four to five times the number of uh, census block groups versus census tracts. So, it is the smallest geographic area that is available for census, um, available from the Census Bureau and for which it tabulates and collects uh, dicentennial census information. And again, the same thing, um, it follows visible boundaries and non-visible boundaries um, and it is quite um, useful. So, uh, so that's census blocks and other tiger layers, uh, there, there's a bunch of stuff out there. Uh, you can get blocks, block groups, and key landmarks and stuff. You can get um, transportation points and non-visible layers, and no, which is es essentially like uh, administrative boundaries and stuff, congressional districts, voting districts, school districts, urban areas, uh, so on and so forth. And you can download information for this stuff too. So. Um, this is quite extensive. Uh, it really depends uh, what you need. Uh, what you need will define what you need to download. So uh, it's important to define your project objectives and at what level you need to download this data. Uh, you can go to Fact Finder again uh, to actually download some of this data. Um, essentially, if you um, let's maybe we can take a look at that too. So, if you go to uh, census.gov, uh, you can essentially uh, go to American data. Under data, there is American Fact Finder where you can do a guided search, um, which would say, I'm looking for people. Let's do that. And it's going to say, what people, what type of people, what are you looking for? So, if you're looking for just, uh, let's say, uh, age, age group information, if you're looking for children, uh, it's going to say, okay, what is the geographic type? So let's say I want census tract information. Um, it's going to say for what sit state? I'm going to say Illinois. So it says, okay, what county do you want? Uh, you can select that or you don't need to. All of census tracts within Illinois, maybe you can do that and add to your selections and then you can essentially, uh, it says you have 4,979 census tracts uh, within that. And then you can click on next. And then uh, if you want to further classify this by race or ethnic groups, you can do that. And I'm going to say next. Um, so I'm sorry, I clicked on something. Anyways. Um, so selected economic characteristics, um, so you have 10, ta 10 tables here, you can download population under 18 years of age, uh, own children under, you know, there are different, uh, there are different uh, tables within this, um, so you can download any one of these and then uh, attach it to your, uh, you know, the, the, since the tiger files. So that's how you do it. And then there is a uh, SF1 summary file, which is the standard summary file where you get all the information by uh, population. You know, uh, there is like uh, you can SF1 has um, you know general housing characteristics, housing occupied housing, age and sex, and so on and so forth. There's a bunch of stuff here. So SF1 and SF3 are the most commonly downloaded. Uh, information or uh, piece of data. Uh, 
so it has um, age householder sf3 has age age of householder birthplace children citizenship disability and other stuff which could be extremely useful so census summary you can download from census.gov uh, you have to download the tables from fact finder you need to download your you know the tiger files to sf1 or sf3 uh, to come create this data sets or you can just down these days it is just provided um, like we saw before it is just provided as a um, complete package which is if you go to tiger you can just download tiger line shape files with demographic data so you can do that if you want to avoid all the work so let's um, move on to a vector data formats so vector data formats we did uh, uh, keep hearing this all the time uh, of course we as sort of like learned about uh, geodata and the different types of uh, geodata that we can use um, uh, essentially shapefile geodata based and um, and then you know a coverage these are all vector data these three and then of course you have tables and then you have raster image which is not vector data it is raster data so we'll talk about coverage uh, today uh, essentially coverage is, is uh, defined as a geo -re relational data model that stores vector data it is an older format which is actually the the original arc info uh, which actually was the basic editing uh, pack software that was developed by ESRI. Um, they had this format called coverage. Essentially, each feature stores a set of points, lines, polygons, and annotation for everything. You know, like if it's like a polygon file, it'll have uh, annotation, arc and tech. If it is a road or a pol, uh, it'll have all these features. Uh, so essentially, uh, it is uh, it looks like a folder when you go to your uh, Windows Explorer and see what's in there um, but you have to use again just like geodatabases uh, it will look like a folder but you have to use our catalog to uh, manage the data uh, and also it, um, it it is a set of files uh, within a folder or a directory called workspace those folders are called workspaces so this is how it looks pretty standard you know uh, you'll, but, but the only difference is that it will have coverage and coverage ID fields within the tables uh, and then area and perimeter are, are like the standard stuff um, or length if it's like a line um, that these are the standard features so shape files we already know what shape file is it's the arc view native format um, and then essentially stores a feed, you know uh, it has three minimum files which is the shape shx and dbf which is uh, it stores shp stores geometry shx stores features dbf stores attribute data and additional data is stored in uh, uh, projection data uh, you know like projection data is stored in a PRJ file, XML and metadata, um, and then you have additional indices, indices, indices uh, like SBN and SBX. So that's how a shape file is uh, formatted. If you go to like Windows Explorer and try to like send a shape file to somebody, that you have to send this combination of files. Like you, you might have just three, you might have four, you might have six, and some cases you might have seven. So, uh, whatever has the same name, you have to send all those files. And CAD drawings, obviously, we know CAD drawings. It is uh, computer aided draft drafting software. Uh, so, AutoCAD and AutoDesk have like a DWG format. Again, that fo those formats are quite easily imported into GIS, and they can be re geo referenced, which we will learn how to do. And then uh, often used by engineering companies uh, like buildings of dra drawings of buildings and so on and so forth. Maybe it could be sewer lines. Uh, it could be many other things which can be imported into RGS for advanced analysis. Uh, because CAD is ideally preferred 
um, method of actually drafting because it is more precise and has a lot more tools for drafters and you know uh, let's face it uh, these two uh, started out as two different softwares like CAD was done by engineering companies it was like AutoCAD and MicroStation and so on all the time and then GIS came into play a little later but they did not have all the editing capabilities now they're sort of like trying to integrate some of these editing capabilities into ArcGIS uh, or GS softwares but it's still not as comprehensive as CAD softwares but they are, they are getting there so a CAD drawing looks something like that when you try to add data it will have features like uh, you know you, you, when you go into a CAD drawing you'll have annotations the DWG file multi patch point polygon and polyline if it has all this so when you add that essentially what you see is something like uh, all this uh, a layer okay, uh, symbolized by a line type most of the time line weights and line type so you have to sort of like clean this up in a way and maybe geo reference this because most of the CAD files can uh, are not geo referenced when they were drawn when they were created so uh, you can go into the drawing layers tab which is actually unique for CAD layers and then turn layers on and off here just like in uh, uh, just like using layers in AutoCAD or uh, MicroStation if you are familiar with those softwares so event files um, essentially we did see what event files are uh, we did create um, we did create a centroid, um, create a feature from centroid uh, from an XY table. That's essentially what event files are. Uh, you create a data table that includes, uh, um, you know, uh, latitude and longitude, which is essentially X and Y fields. Uh, they can be displayed as X and Y data. Display X and Y data essentially means creating an event file for X and Y so we already seen how to do this so i'm not gonna go into the details we can we can work on this in the walkthrough uh you have to export these event files because event files are usually temporary uh, data sets you need to export them to make them permanent raster data formats is uh honestly uh, you know these are um, usually in tiff tagged image file format uh, tiff file with a tiff, uh, star dot tiff file extension uh, these are hi very high quality images these are aerial photography uh, and are quite commonly used in publishing sizes are huge gigantic now once i had to copy uh, St. Louis County files into a hard drive and it was like 56 gb something like that so these files can get really big so there are ways to deal with it you uh, you create like a index and you create um, as again uh, these sizes are large because of um, the data is sort of uncompressed it's like raw data um, and then of course you have a graphic interchange format with this the GIF file um, uh, and GIF is the file extension and it is used for schematic drawings that are relatively large areas with solid fill and a uh, few color variations these are very small sizes and then of course we have jpegs uh, joint photographic export with, which is your regular file you know like a regular photo file that you download on from your cameras to your pcs so most commonly used for photographs and uses file compression and and of course when you do this you sort of compromise on picture detail so in summary uh, this is what we have learned and we will jump right into the um, walkthrough thanks for watching